Um, it's things I got to talk about my contract after I lost yesterday, but uh, I'm just extremely grateful for this opportunity that I get to be in a Broncos uniform for the next four years. I'm grateful for Mr. Elway, Mr. Ellis, um, Mr. Russell, Mr. Harbardo for, you know, the opportunity they give to me to bless my family. Um, I'm thankful for them. You know, they drafted me and they took a chance on me when they didn't have to. And, you know, I've had my bumps in the road over the last three years, um, but I know they continue to love and, and care for me. And, and now they bless me again for another four years. So I'm, I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for Coach Vangio and the love that he trusted me and never gave up on me, left me out there. Um, when, you know, a lot of people told him not to, but he trusted me and believed in me and, and knew that, you know, I could turn this around. Um, I'm thankful for him and the love and support he gives me. I'm also thankful for um, Coach Munchak and you know, the times that he, you know, helped me change my game for the better, um, put me on the path to be the best left tackle. That's, that's been my goal the whole time coming into the league. Um, how he coaches me hard, how he gives me pointers, how we talk. I love him dearly. Um, and I'm grateful I get to have him as my coach. I love everyone in this whole organization, you know, from the security staff to the cooks, to the equipment staff, to the training room, all, all the, you know, endless hours that they put in to make me successful and to, to make me the man I am today. Thank you for my teammates, each one of them. I love them dearly. Um, I couldn't be where I'm at without them. Um, the hardships that we had, um, the times that we, um, you know, we win and lose together, but, you know, the friendships that I gained over the years, I'm, I'm very grateful for all of them. So shout out to all of them for making me better. I'm grateful for my agency, you know, Chase Callahan and the Red One family to, you know, getting this contract done um, sooner than later. So shout out to them and thankful for my beautiful wife, my children, and my family, um, trusting me, believing in me, endless hours, you know, studying away from my family. Um, so my wife, Natalie, and my, you know, my kids are Ryan Kingston. Uh, I'm thankful for them and the opportunity I get to become, uh, that I'm a father and as a husband and continue to bless them for many years. So. I'm grateful for you all too. Um, I know you guys have kicked me in the butt over my years um, and, you know, rode me hard. So I'm, I'm, those times have made me the man I am today. And, and I'm just extremely emotional of, of being a Bronco for the next four years. And I love each one of you all. And I'm grateful for our friendships. And uh, I'm looking forward to many more years of getting back on the top of the AFC West. And uh, I know they picked the right guy to do that. And that's me. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, at this time, I'll open up for questions. Go ahead, Brandon. All right, so Garrett, last two to ask you if you were hopeful that you and the Broncos might get something done before the end of the season, and you said that'd be nice to leave it up to, to Chase. Was that just coincidence? Had something already started working Tuesday, or did it happen shortly after, and then that just got the ball rolling, just co coincidental timing, because this is the kind of deal that gets done this time of year? I had no idea, to be honest. Um, I really didn't. I found out you know, late Saturday, oh, Friday night. Um, and I, you know, my mom and dad was in town, so I was thankful for that. So we had a, a huge moment like that, but I really had no idea. Um, you know, my job, like I said, my job when I, when you guys talked to me on Tuesday is to play football um, and my agent was going to take care of the rest and that's what he did. Um, and so I'm just grateful for that we got the deal done. Um, and now that I'm here, now I'm just ready to continue to move forward. Like I said, it's been a real emotional last, you know, 72 hours from Friday night to what happened Saturday to Sunday now here today that I finally got some sleep last night. So uh, I'm very grateful um, and I'm just really looking forward to finishing this season strong and, and, and helping my team win as, as much as I can. Next one, Colin. Hey, Garrett, two-parter for you. So Coach Fangio mentioned a conversation you and him had on Saturday after he found out about the extension. Uh, any tidbits of that you'd like to share? And secondly, you mentioned those bumps in the road. You know, how has like the, the fans booing you over the last couple of years, the, the, the struggles, how did that kind of uh, drive you or, or did, how did you block that out to get to where you are today? Um, that moment I'm going to keep to myself with Coach Vangio, but I will tell you this. Um, I love that man dearly. Um, he, he, he put up with me for the last two years of, you know, a booze to – you know, telling people to kick me out, but he knew what I was capable of doing because he saw me in practice every day. Um, we talk regularly. Um, he believes in me. I believe in him. I think he's a phenomenal head coach that's leading this organization in the right way. But that moment I had with him when we both, you know, shedded teary eyes and, you know, the time that he said, I knew you could do it, um, that meant a lot to me. Um, I also told him, you know, I, I won't let you down, coach. And he told me he's going to hold me accountable to that. So, I'm very thankful for that. And uh, I know that I won't let him down. I'm going to continue to, to fight everything I have to, to turn this organization around the right way. Um, 
but you know, the last couple of years it's, it's been hard. Um, and, uh, on, you know, those hard times, like I said, on Tuesday, identify it, it when you go through a hard time as a man, it, it really shows you, um, where you can go and, and what you can become. And I took that upon myself to get better and, and to continue to work on my craft. You know, like I said, I, t I told people this off season, I didn't really change anything. I really just identified what, what I was doing was wrong and, and how can I get better in those areas. And, and that's what I did. I, you know, I worked hard every off season prior to, you know, this past off season, you know, I worked hard, I lifted, I ran, I, I watched film, but this, this off season was special, crucial because I, I really identified what was wrong and really focused on that. And, uh, and now it's paying off and I'm going to continue to work hard, continue to continue to do what I'm doing. And, and I know that I'm going to get to where I need to be. Thanks for my question. Garrett, this deal kind of, congratulations, by the way. Um, this deal came together pretty quick, it sounds like. Um, you you could have haggled more. I think the uh, the highest, you know, you didn't get the highest paid. You're about $6 million a year, less than the highest paid. Had you gone to free agency, you might have got that. Um, just talk about not wanting to go to free agency and taking the deal that you got. Uh, my whole hope I was going to play here my entire career. Um, I love Denver. Like I said before, I love the city. I love my teammates. I love um, really everything about this state. Um, the people here, the people that I've ran in contact with and, and helped, and they've helped me. Um, I wanted to stay here. This is home to me. My family's here. My kids, you know, Kingston's starting school, and uh, the school that he goes to has is, is been awesome for him. Um, and so, you know, like, yeah, like, you, I could have said, yeah, you know, I could have took in more in free agency, but that's not the whole point. The contract that, that – Chase Callahan and the Broncos came to agreement with was a perfect contract for me and my family. Um, it's exactly what I needed and my family needed. And that's all that really matters to me. Yeah. It would have been awesome to be the highest paid, but you know, at the same time, I'm thankful for what I got. I'm blessed for what I got. And I know the Broncos and Chase did exactly what they needed to do to, to get me to stay here. And uh, I, I took it and I'm thankful for it. And I'm, I'm, you know, now it's behind me and now I can just focus on being the best left tackle in the game of football and I continue to help, you know, this Broncos organization get back on top of the AFC West, and, that, and that's what I plan to do. Thanks, I'm sorry. Garrett, congratulations on the contract, man. Uh, remarkable for you. I'm happy for you. When, when you were on your Mormon mission in Springs, you were in Pueblo at a time, did you ever allow yourself to daydream that something like this could be possible, an NFL career where you're making, you know, generational money? Oh, it was funny. Um, I think ever since I was around, you know, nine or 12 years old, I always told people I was going to, you know, play in the NFL and, and uh, be the best in my position. Um, even in my mission, I, I talked to some of my missionary companions and uh, they still to this day, they, they're mind blown of, of that, you know, I literally did what I told them I was going to do is play in the NFL. So I was just speaking to one of my companions the other day and, and that's what we were talking about. Uh, but, you know, like I said, the, when I came here, I knew this city was – or this state was special. The people that I served here, um, I I'll always re remember those memories. Um, and now I have so many more memories I can continue to to pile on top of each other. But it's awesome, man. It's just a great opportunity that I get to have um, with my family and continue to build um, this great organization up. And uh, I, I'm, I'm speechless, man. I'm still emotional. Um, and I love it, and, I, and I'm grateful for the opportunities that, you know, Mr. Elway and Mr. Ellis and uh, Mr. Russell continue to put trust into me, and, and I promise you I'm not going to let those guys down. Hey, Garrett, first off, congratulations uh, on the extension. Uh, and w w when you look at this, knowing that you're going to be here for four more years, what, what are the next steps that you want to take, whether it's on the field or off the field or both? I mean, everyone's – when you get drafted, your goal is, you know, to, get, to be paid as much as you can and, and to, you know, provide the organization for what they, they drafted you for. And, you know, that's to protect the blind side for me um, and to do everything I can to, you know, hold down that position. Um, and, and, you know, that's what, I, that's what I've done. And I think that I've done a great job up to this point of really, you know, focusing on and dialing in things. And I'm looking forward to, you know, the many more years to come. But my goal is now is to chase greatness. I think um, – you know, the goal before was to get a contract to, you know, to take care of my family and my kids, kids for many years to come. And now it's to chase greatness. I mean, you talk about a guy like Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, and those guys that, you know, some of the greatest athletes 
you know, Joe Staley, Joe Thomas, all those guys that, you know, they got their second contract to the third contract, but they're chasing greatness. They want to be the best to ever play the game. They want to be, you know, where everyone, you know, kids, kids down the road, generations down the road still know who those guys are. Michael Jordan, you know, you guys, when you guys were young, that's who you guys watched. And, and that's what I want to become. I want to become a guy where, you know, all linemen down the road, you know, 10, 20 years down the road would look back at my film and be like, how can I be like that guy? Um, I want to be that role model. I want to chase greatness. I want to be the best left tackle to ever play this game. And, and that's my mindset and, and it's not going to go away. And I'm just going to continue to do whatever I can to fight for those, um, for those things to come true. Guys, we've got a couple more questions in the queue. Next one we'll go with Arnie Stapleton. Hey Garrett, last year at the end of the season, John Elway and Vic Fangio both praised your durability and your availability. And I'm wondering how much um, did it help that you were allowed to play through kind of the growing pains that you experienced in the NFL? And then secondly, was there ever a moment like an epiphany where what Munch was telling you or anything kind of clicked and came together? Do you remember anything that kind of started the turnaround last year for you? Um, I don't remember a pinpoint of what really started my turnaround point. I think, you know, as, as a player, um, you, you take a moment of your time to really reflect upon what, what's, go, what's going on and, and why is these things continue to happening. And I, and I did that by watching film, by, by studying, by taking multiple sets in my kitchen, having my wife rush me, like I said, on Tuesday to, to watching film by, by really identifying the little things. Um, and those little things are, you know, turn into big things, if you guys notice over the years. And so if I eliminate those little things and continue to focus on, you know, the, the details of the game by, you know, setting square to the, you know, for more than just one kick to placing my hands in the right position to really taking a deep breath and, and watching what the, the old line is doing. Like, you know, when I get to the line, Coach Munchak always talks about having a game plan. You know, so my game plan is, you know, set, scan, spot. So, you know, I scan the defense, I get into my stance, and then I, and I set to my spot. So those were those little things that I really focused on and found like those were the things that helped me change my game. And if I continue to do that, you know, I'm going to be very successful like I have been. Um, but like I said, it's, those are the things that have really helped me. And uh, I know if I do those, I'm going to be where I need to be. Next one, Eric Delon. Couple for you, Garrett. Uh, congratulations. Thank First, you. for for all the booing, there has been kind of a large segment of fans on social media this year that has said, "Extend Garrett Bowles, uh, get Garrett Bowles to the Pro Bowl." Does that kind of acceptance mean more to you now? Oh man, you know it's uh that's always a dream for anyone to you know make it to have you know post awards after you know a season that that I'm having. You know it's always great to have recognition, especially. Um, when a team, you know, extends your contract. But I'm, like I said, my goal is to play football. And if those things happen, great. If those things don't happen, then I'm going to continue to strive for those things next year. But I just want to be a consistent player that everyone can, can look upon and, and can trust and can rely on. And if I do that, then I'm going to help our offense score points. You know, we're known the last couple of years of our offense not scoring a lot of points. And that had to do a lot with me by, you know, killing drives and, and really not um, playing at a high level that, that I know I could. And now that, you know, I eliminated those little things and now, you know, we're, we're moving the ball and we're moving the chains and I'm becoming more of a consistent, reliable player. That's my goal. So if I do that, um, everything else would take care of itself. And then second one for you, those hard times you talked about, did you ever have to consider whether it was last year or this season when the team didn't pick up your option that maybe this wasn't going to be the place you were long term? I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that hurt me. I mean, you know, of course, you know, a team trusts you and they didn't pick up the option, but at the same time, like that, that happens to a lot of people. So um, I didn't really let that bother me. I just continued to, you know, focus on what was important and, and that's to play good football. So I took it upon myself um, to show them that I can, and uh, this is the result that happened. And, you know, the fans had a right to boo me. I wasn't playing good. Um, I, I really wasn't. I, I was hurting our team in a lot of ways. And, and it, and it was up to me to fix those things. So, you know, our fans are passionate fans that, you know, this is an organization that's been on top of winning for so many years. And it's unacceptable for, for us for not to be winning and not to be dominating the league like we have for so many years. You know, you talk to previous players and, you know, they, they hurt because they know this, or, this great organization and the people that are in this building 
you know, so many endless hours that they put in to help us win and we're not doing that. So, um, yes, I had to take that upon myself and really eliminate the things that are hurting us. And now that I'm here and I'm playing great football and they, and they trust me to be the left tackle. Now I'm just going to continue to serve my teammates and be the best person I can be to get us back on top. Final one, uh, Nick Kosbiner. Gary, congratulations to you and your family. Uh, you touched on this just a little bit ago, but just the, can you take us through just sort of the, I guess the chaos of that weekend, um, you know, getting, getting that news and then all that was going on with the quarterbacks. What was it like to play a game the, the, like you guys did on Sunday? And then my second part of that is, is do you guys now welcome these, you know, the quarterbacks back with, with open arms, sort of knowing that probably nobody feels worse about what happened than, than they did? Well, first of all, that was about the most craziest game I've ever been a part of. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's a game that, you know, you, I'm going to tell my grandkids one day, hey, I played a game with no quarterback. <laughs> and we had to get a quarterback out the practice squad. But I'm grateful for Kendall, man. That, it takes balls to go out there and, and, and take a snap behind center against, you know, grown men that are, you know, flying at him and everything's going crazy. And he went in there, you know, like a man and, and did what he needed to do. Yeah, the result was probably not what we wanted. But at the same time, that's mad respect to that, that, that kid, man. I, I love that kid. Um, he's a great kid. He's going to help our team win. Um, that I, I respect a guy like that. You know, that's the guys that we want on this team is, you know, whatever the coach asks them to do or whatever, you know, the older guys want the younger players to do. And, and those guys are going to step up and, and take care of a situation that he didn't know till 7 o'clock at night on, on Saturday and we are supposed to play at 2.05 on Sunday. So um, it's, it's crazy that that's what happened. Um, but at the same time, I'm not – we're going to open – you know, those quarterbacks, they knew what they did. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they probably feel terrible about that, but we're not going to kick a dead horse over that. We're going to love them. We're going to cherish them. I love Drew. I love Brett. I love Jeff. I love Blake. I love all four of those guys. Um, those are my quarterbacks. And you guys know my quote. I'm going to say it again. You know, my quarterback's like my wife. You touch my wife, I'm going to have to come after you. So um, I, love, I love my quarterbacks. I protect them. Um, and, they, and as long as I protect them, they're going to do what they want. And so we're going to open them. We're going to have open arms, welcome them back and get ready to play the Chiefs on Sunday Night Football.